Hi, this is Mr. West, and you're watching a tutorial video for adding and subtracting mixed fractions from MathDrills.com. Tons of great resources on MathDrills. I also have a playlist for all the MathDrills worksheets, so if you guys want to check that out, make sure to look at the end screen and also in the description. So, some things before we get started. One, we need to understand how to find a common denominator with fractions. So if you're not familiar with that, I have some videos to help you with that. I'm going to kind of glaze over that part. And also we need to understand what is a mixed fraction. So a mixed fraction is simply a whole number with a fraction component. Okay. So those are combined. So if you were to kind of break this down into what it looks like in terms of your, you know, your pizza fractions, we would have two holes for this first number. Okay, so there's two holes, and I would have to shade these in to represent that's 100% or, you know, five out of five parts. And then we'd have a partial. Okay, so if I put this here, I'd only have one-fifth here out of this hole. So let me go ahead and kind of represent that. Oops, I did that backwards. Like this. Okay, so that would be one, two, and then one-fifth. So that'd be two and one fifth, just to give you an idea of what we're working with. So then we're gonna add that on to one and three fourths, and we're gonna see how many holes we have plus fractions left over, okay? So a little bit going on, but we're gonna break it down first with some easier problems. So this is kind of a tough one to begin with. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to number nine. So number nine, we have three halves minus one half. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a look at our whole number. So I'm going to take a look at their whole number and I see I have three minus one. Okay. So I have just that subtraction. That problem is pretty easy. I get two. So I have two holes. Okay. So that'd be two whole units, but then I also have to take into account the fraction. So I'm going to take a look at that and I'm going to subtract those from each other. So I'm going to subtract one half minus one half. And for this one, I get zero. Okay. Now quick refresher on how I do um, subtracting fractions. If I have a common denominator, that means it's the same. That's the bottom number. I can keep that number the same over here. And then I can just subtract the numerator. So I would do one minus one. That gives me zero. Zero out of two, of course, is just zero. So I have no fractions left over. This is the thing you're going to tag on to the end of the whole number. If you have nothing left over, then it's just going to be the whole number. So we could put here two and zero halves. Okay two and zero over two, but that's just two. So two is gonna be our answer here for this this one. That's our good introductory problem. Um, number three is very similar. I'm gonna do that one real quick. This would just be three minus three, and that gives us zero. But then what do we have left over for our fractions? We'd have one half, I'm gonna do this over here, separate. One half minus one half, and that's also zero. So I could put or zero over two. So I have zero and zero over two. That's just zero. It's the same number subtracting itself, which is just zero. So this answer is a pretty easy one. That's just zero. Okay, let's do another one over here, okay? So number four, just to give you an idea of how to do these types of problems. So again, we have our holes. The whole number's out in front. We're gonna do five minus five, and that's zero, okay? Now we need to see our fraction component to see what's left over. So we have three fourths minus one fourth, whoops. Okay, we have the same denominator. We have a four in the denominator and a four in the denominator. So we can just go ahead and copy that down. That's gonna be our resulting denominator. Now we do three minus one in the top and we get two. So this could be zero and two fourths. That's a, just an easy way you can do it. Now this can be reduced, okay? And I also have a video on reducing if you need that, but you just divide the top and bottom by the same factor, one over two. Two fourths is the same thing as one half. So I have zero and two fourths. We don't really need to write the zero, so we can just write two fourths. And as I said, we can reduce that to one half, and that's gonna be our answer. Five and three quarters minus five and one quarter is just gonna be one half. And you could even visualize this, $5.75 minus $5.75, and 25 cents, and you're going to have 50 cents left over, which is the same thing as half a dollar, okay? So that's just another way to visualize it. Now, what if they don't have the same fractional denominator uh, in the base? So let's go ahead and let's do an easier one first. Here we go. Five and one half plus, finally we're going to get into some addition, plus five and one fourth. So we're going to do the same process we did 
with the subtraction. We're gonna add five and five, okay? The whole numbers first. We're gonna deal with the whole numbers first and we get 10, okay? Now we're gonna handle the fraction component. So the fraction component here, we have one half and we have one fourth. Now, one half plus one fourth, we can't just add the denominator and put six and put two six. That's not how it works. That's a common mistake. Don't do that, okay? We have to have a common denominator before we add. So, how do we do that? Well, you can always multiply the two denominators together, okay? So I need to change this problem first. I need to change the way it looks. You can always multiply the two denominators together, four times two, and that can always work as your common denominator, okay? So I multiplied two times four to get eight, and that will always work, okay? So then what do I do? I multiply, uh, because I multiplied two times four, okay? I need to multiply, that's technically four over four. I get four eighths, and that's the same thing as one half, and then I multiplied one fourth by two over two, okay? Four times two is eight, that's four times two, two times four. That's how I got the eight. And then that would be two eighths, okay? That's one way I can do that. Or I can recognize the least common denominator is gonna be four because two goes into four, okay? And four goes into four. That's the another way to do it. Again, I have a separate video for that. I, want, I didn't wanna spend too much time on this video for it. Regardless, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the two times four method. And now I have a common denominator. I'm gonna put eight down, okay, eight, eight. Okay, that checks out. I can go ahead and put my common denominator. And now I just do four plus two and that's six. I can always reduce it later. That's why I'm saying you can always multiply the two denominators together. So I can divide the, both of these by two and I get three over four, three fourths. So one half plus, three four, plus one fourth is three fourths. So how does this work out? Well, I already did the whole numbers and I got 10. Then I added the fraction component and I got three fourths. And there's my answer, 10 and 3 fourths. So if you wanna leave it as a mixed number, totally okay. Just leave it as 10 and 3 fourths. I'm guessing that's the main intent for this exercise is knowing how to keep it as a mixed fraction. Uh, and that's how you do it, okay? So uh, if we extend that to a different problem, let's go ahead and do number six. This one looks a little tough, but I'm gonna show you it's not so bad. So again, let's handle the whole number component, three minus two, that's equal to one. Now I have to handle the fraction component. Uh, let's take a different color just to just make it a little easier visually. So we have one half minus five ninths. Now just don't do two minus nine, okay? That should be a good giveaway there is that you're gonna get a negative number. So what we need to do is we need to change how this problem looks. Anytime you have two different denominators, okay, you need to change how it looks first. So I know that I can multiply two times nine to get 18. So I'm gonna change both the denominators to 18. What did I multiply two by to get to 18? I multiplied it by nine. So I also have to multiply the top by nine. So it gives me nine over 18. Nine over 18 is the same thing as one half. That's why I can do it. I just changed how it looks. Minus, okay? What did I multiply nine by to get to 18? Well, in this case, I multiplied nine by two. So I thought also have to multiply the five by two. So five times two is 10. Okay, just checking here. All right, so now this one's actually a little more complicated than I anticipated. So we have 9 18 minus 10 18. You'll need to understand negative numbers here because we're going to get minus 1 18. We already did the 9 minus 9, but then we have one left over that we have to take away. So we get negative 1 18. So what does that mean? Well, we had one hole, okay? Let me go ahead and move this over. And then we have minus 1 18th. So we have to essentially do an additional problem here. 1 minus 1 18th. Well, I need to change this guy. Technically, 1, 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1. So I need to change this guy to a fraction. And we have essentially another subtraction problem. So I have here 18 over 18 minus 1. Oh, by the way, I just multiplied 1 times 18. But then I can keep this guy the same. Minus 1 over 18. Well, what does that give me? That gives me 17 eighteenths, and there's my answer. So that one's a little bit tougher, but most of these are not like that. They're a little bit easier. For example, let me do like one more for you. And if you have more questions, you can always leave a comment and I'll answer that for you. So two plus one, that equals three. Now I handle the fraction. So we have three fourths plus one fifth. Okay, this one's a, a, good, a good fraction to do. Okay, a little bit tougher. So I have three fourths plus one fifth. I do not have a common denominator, so I need to change the problem. 
I'm going to do 4 times 5. That gives me 20. That's going to be my denominator for, for both of these. 4 times 5 gave me 20, so I also need to multiply the 3 times 5. And that gives me 15. I multiply 5 times 4 to get 20. So I also multiply the top by 4, and I get 4. So I'm just adding these two together, and I get 19 over 20. Okay. Now, let's say I get something over 20. I'm not sure if there is a problem in here like that where I have to make the mix no, the whole number bigger. But just keep that in mind. Sometimes you might get, like, for example, 25 over 20. Well, technically, that's the same thing as 1 and 5 twentieths. So just keep in mind, you might have to add on to that 3 or that whole number out in front first and then add the fraction component. But this one's going to be 3 and 19 twentieths. Let me go ahead and just quick browse the addition, see if there's any like that from my first glance. Okay, I think this one's going to be it. I'm going to do one more. Sorry, I said I was going to do just one more, but ugh, duty calls. Okay, so we have 1 plus 2 here, and that's 3. Then I have 1 half plus 3 fifths. Okay, let's do the same process. It's going to be 10, 5 times 2. And I had to get 5 there. I multiply by 5, and I multiply this guy by 2, and I get 6, and I get 11 tenths. Okay, perfect problem to end on. So I got 11 tenths. Well, I just don't put 11 tenths. That doesn't look good because I have an improper with a mixed number, that's no good, okay? So what I need to do here is I need to see how many tenths I have. I need to convert this into a whole number or a mixed number. So I have one full tenth. That's the same thing as 10 over 10 plus one over 10, okay? So I wanted to break it down into as many 10 components as possible with the, with the numerator matching the denominator, and I can do just one of those. So this number is one, so that's three plus one, plus one tenth. So that's my new problem. Okay, this becomes that. So then I have four and one tenth, and that's my answer. Okay, so don't just say, oh, I added one plus two. The answer is going to be three in the front. It's not necessarily the case because you might have more than a whole number once you add the fraction component. And that's all there is to this video. If you guys have more questions, like I said, make sure to uh, leave a comment. I also have a whole math drills playlist, of course, so make sure to check that out. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.